The photoelectric effect is essentially the release of electrons from a photoemissive surface, typically a metal surface, when it is exposed to electromagnetic radiation. Due to the dual nature of light, we can consider light as waves or particles, called photons. A photon is a discrete packet of light energy, depending on the frequency of the source of light. When the light strikes the photoemissive surface, the energy of the photon is passed on to an electron. By using Planck's relation, we know that energy is proportional to the frequency of a photon. A high frequency source of light will have more energy, causing an electron to gain sufficient kinetic energy to escape the atomic lattice. However, if the frequency is too low, the energy is still passed on to the electron, but doesn't have sufficient energy to be released from an atom's shell. This can also be used to explain the concept of stopping voltage, which we'll come across later. In the midst of 1890s, Heinrich Hertz attempted to prove Maxwell's theory of electromagnetic waves by using what was called a spark gap generator. He was able to prove that electromagnetic waves produced a current in the receiving loop by observing the sparks produced, but he also unintentionally discovered the photoelectric effect. But he died in 1894 at an age of 36. Poor lad. It was his assistant Philip Leonard who continued his research on the phenomenon. He devised an apparatus including a photoemissive surface, the cathode, and a receiving plate to collect the emitted electrons, the anode. His aim was to study how the energy of the emitted electrons, or photoelectrons, varied with the intensity and frequency of the light used. In his experiment, the light would cause the plate to emit electrons and flow towards the receiving plate, generating a current through the circuit. When the light was switched on, the energy from the photons is transferred to the electron, allowing it to be emitted from the atom as well as providing sufficient energy to pass the gap between the plates. To measure the energy the electrons emit, he charged the receiving end with a negative charge with a power supply. As like charges repel, the potential difference produced pushes the photoelectrons back in the opposite direction, reducing the kinetic energy needed to pass the gap, slowing down the electrons. Eventually, he reached a voltage where no electrons passed, which he called the stopping voltage. This is the energy or the voltage needed to stop photoelectrons traveling to the opposite plate. He realized, for a given frequency of electromagnetic wave, the maximum kinetic energy the electrons have are all stopped by the same voltage. He was able to use this relationship to find the energy the electrons emitted. He then repeated the experiment with varying frequency and intensity of light. He observed an increase in light intensity would increase the number of emitted photoelectrons, and the kinetic energy or the induced voltage of the emitted electrons depended on the frequency of the light. But he never understood why this was happening. He was not able to find a relationship between the energy or the intensity of the light emitted with the kinetic energy of the electrons released from the metal plate. The major flaw Leonard had was using classical theory such as Maxwell's theories to understand the photoelectric effect by assuming the average energy carried by a photoelectron should increase with the intensity of the incident light. This is where Albert Einstein comes in. He had some extraordinary ideas, almost as extraordinary as his moustache. In 1905, he used ideas from his friend Max Planck to consider light as a particle. He was the one who proposed that the photons strike electrons in a photoemissive surface, thereby transferring all its energy to the electron, allowing the electron to escape. Thanks, Einstein.